On a personal note, sir, uh, I would like to get your response to this bit, bit of news coming out of my state here in South Dakota, where you have placed in the pole position as the front runner here in South Dakota, and uh, for a debate with uh, yourself, uh, Justin Amash, Judge Jim Gray, Dr. Joe Jorgensen, and Vernon Supreme. <laughs> The votes were uh, casted amongst our members, and uh, you took the uh, lead. And like I said, the results were published. Every campaign has been invited, and I uh, just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, thank you, CJ. I appreciate that. And it's it's interesting after the last week's events to be called the Ron Paul slash Bernie Sanders of the Libertarian Party, but I think the Libertarian Party has proven that we are better than the old parties. We don't really have such a character. Occasionally there's some bias, occasionally there's some oversight, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm honored by, uh, you know, to, to, to have uh, placed first in this poll and, and to have the support of so many of the voters uh, in, in the state of South Dakota. Of course, you know, I, I have some unfair advantages having lived there for a bit of a time and having you there, uh, but also it's because I've put in the hustle, you know, and I've done, uh, I think we've done, three events in South Dakota in the last three years all together, something like that. Uh, maybe more, maybe one last, but on, on the. Not to mention, sir, uh, you actually participated and were the only presidential candidate that participated in our pre-convention party and our convention itself. And I think that goes to show what a little effort can do. So uh, you definitely earned it, sir. Well, thank you. And it, it, it's really putting in the hustle. And, and I think people are starting to recognize you know, what I represent is an opportunity for the Libertarian Party as someone who's going to, you know, if I get the nomination, I, I'm doing nothing else. I'm going to be 100 percent focused on that. You know, I've got a team that's ready to go. I've got you. We've got this remote production set up that's just amazing as a way to bring this this great media product to people every day. And that, you know, we, we have the, the, the hustle and the grassroots to to bring out a victory here. And, you know, it, it's uh, clear that Amash is coming in at, in first place right now. Uh, making a big splash, but he hasn't been vetted. He hasn't had to meet a lot of the candidates. They haven't had a chance to look at his record. And then there are three grassroots candidates kind of vying for second place right now. And that's myself, Jacob Mornberger, and Joe Jorgensen. And, and any three of us would be, uh, you know, head and shoulders above Justin Amash as a messenger for liberty from what I've seen so far. And this is nothing against Amash. If he had announced you know, a few months earlier and, you know, gotten out like John McAfee and read my book, perhaps, or talked to other libertarians and, and, and understood, you know, what it is that really motivates this movement that has been behind him in a lot of ways and, and, and supported him in Congress for being uh, the most libertarian in Congress. And now the, the first libertarian party affiliated member of Congress. Huge, absolutely huge. Uh, but unless he makes, you know, that significant improvement or connection with the party, in, in the next and now you know this is the, the other crazy thing is this is all up in the air right now you know um this is all up in the air with um the convention vote possibly happening on may 22nd uh, as scheduled a virtual debate hosted by national on the uh 21st i think that's going to go ahead and happen as planned the the but but as of this morning already cj i know you saw this in in one of our group chats that that, that we're both in there was a uh, a post from alicia madsen who is an at-large member of the lnc former secretary beat out by karen ann harlos who's the secretary now saying that that she is going to move to overturn the vote from last saturday and she believes she has the votes to do that to nix the online vote for the POTUS and VP nominations. And as she said in her post, she wouldn't be doing it if she didn't think she had the votes. So there is, you know, the, the, the battle rages on at the level of the national leadership of the Libertarian Party. I, I want to delay for a number of reasons. One, I think it serves, well, I shouldn't say I want to delay. I don't want to delay at all. Excuse me, let me take that back. I, I want an in-person convention as soon as practically possible, as in I, I, rather than, than rush an online vote. And with that, there, the one reason is the integrity of the vote. 
so that it's an open and transparent process as we have at our in-person conventions. Uh, well, I, I keep thinking of more reasons. There's the media pop. We do it online. Nobody gives a damn. It's not a story. And there's there's no media out of it. I mean, we get some, some stories. We get some, you know, boring blurbs. But that's about it compared to an in-person convention, convention insignificant. I think it serves to my advantage. I think my supporters are more committed. I think I get more out of people who are in the alternate pool when people in the delegate pool can't make it. Um, and, and of our of our supporters, they are more committed and, and, and able to go to an in-person convention rather than an online one. We also saw a lot of last minute corrupt efforts. I'm not gonna uh, name names or states here, but we saw places where uh, slates were organized kind of out of nowhere. And a lot of our delegates got bumped from delegate status to alternate status, where the people who are there now might be able to attend an online convention. But these are interlopers, uh, you know, who don't really care enough to go to an in-person convention. Getting them out, them out of the picture would be good for the party, regardless. And vetting Amash, if Amash is going to be the nom, to have the time to vet him, to meet him in person, to challenge him in person, to have the debates in person, and and to see who really would be the best candidate for the Libertarian Party. I think. Uh, and, and of course, just to not look like idiots when the old parties are able to have their conventions in person when we have everything else that's happening right now. So and any other questions or comments about the uh, the presidential primary as, as, we, as we get into the home stretch here? We've got some exciting debates coming up. We've got uh, we've got. Please go ahead. Oklahoma is making an, an interesting move here that I. I read this morning, and this comes from the Oklahoma Libertarian Party itself, and it's putting forth what looks to appear, and I can kind of—I'm not going to read it all for this time, to take of time purpose, but for everyone to just point to that there's one big thing that they're going to propose in all of this, and that is that uh, they want to. Uh, where's it at? Um, it's in here. They want to censure the chair, but. Uh, and the basically the LNC as a whole. So uh, censure the chair of the Libertarian Party yeah. and urges the Libertarian National Committee to join us in doing so for failing to maintain the impartially required impartiality required of his office, acting outside the scope of his, his duties by circumventing the decision of the Libertarian National Committee to hold an in-person convention, attempting to influence the outcomes. Uh, and opinions and subverting the will of the members of the Libertarian Party. And that comes straight from their parties. Yeah, there's there's a lot more to this. I, I don't suggest that anyone really try to get a handle on all this back and forth that we're doing right now. Um, uh, my position is to lobby the LNC for what I think is best for the party and for the cause. Opinion and and that's what I will be doing in, in good faith, directly uh, asking the them to vote for what I think is best to have and for the party and the cause. And I, yeah, in a sense, you know, there's a, a lot of people just watching helplessly. But if you're a delegate, get in touch with your state chair. Uh, if you're not a delegate, find a way to lobby. The LNC, you know, as a member of the national organization, you can join free lp.org slash free membership and say, I'm a member, I'm a national member, join your state party, get involved, have a say in this and be paying attention because if this gets ugly, we're going to be on a mission to fix it for the next cycle. It's going to be four years, get ready for a long fight, but this is the part where it heats up. This is the part of the four year fight where we all got to be super frosty. Jim. Yeah. Uh, well, real quick, Ride With Me 38 says, I hope that's not water Adam is drinking, because <laughs> it doesn't look clear. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, no, it's it's uh, iced tea. Yeah. Not water, oh, like it's pee? Does it look like water. pee? Yeah, you you pee jug? Water. No, we pee right on the trees out here. Yeah. So we live outdoors. <laughs> yeah, okay. Any other comments? Uh, you are, Ricky Rose says, you are in one of my top five, and none of the candidates are in first place for me. You all have your strength. What would you say to many people like her that are? Yeah, I, I mean, my my closing argument is is two things really. You know that I'm a a capable messenger. You know that I have the presentation, the command presence, and the skills to carry out the campaign that we need for the Libertarian Party. 
But more importantly, the platform gives us the opportunity to unite people across the aisles, across the entire political spectrum. Localization embedded in policy is not just the most principled libertarian platform. It's the most practical as policy, and it's the most practical as political strategy because it starts with the potential of 25%. What I mean by that is that secession in 2014 pulled over 25% in America. That was before Donald Trump, before the coronavirus and all of the polarization that we're experiencing today. We could be starting with 25% out the gate if we communicate to the American people, we're the Libertarian Party, we vote for your right to localize and to declare your independence, at least at the state, but ultimately, in the way that you know I can communicate these principles, also with that you as an individual, as a free, beautiful, independent human being, have the right to do that. And that what I am able to do as a candidate is proven in what I've done with this media production throughout my career as a media activist, as, as a libertarian activist in general, as an author, a YouTuber, all of these things. This is a message that is proven to work. So if you want that, I can offer that in a way that no other candidate can. The second thing is the hustle. And I think my activism record of the last 14 years proves that I'm willing to work harder than anybody else for this cause. Not only that, as your nominee, you will see me milk every last drop of value out of being the nominee of the Libertarian Party over the next four years. I won't disappear like Gary Johnson. And, you know, I love Gary. But what did he do with that title that he could have used to, to build the party? He could have just, he could have set up a webcam in a corner of his house in Santa Fe and, and said, you know, I'll do, I'll do a couple of interviews a week, you know, and work with the National Press Secretary. He went and climbed bicycles or climbed mountains and rode bicycles, right? And, you know, I, this is, this is my life. There's, I, I see no greater value with what I would do with my time than to represent the Libertarian Party, to do as many interviews as possible, to go to as many state conventions as possible. And I've proven this as a candidate, getting around in this bus, no force one, making the hustle. I guarantee if you do the math, you'll see I have done way more state conventions than all the other candidates. Any of, And I would wager, even right now, of all the major contenders, I've done more state conventions than all of them combined in my time as an activist, in my time in the Libertarian Party. All right, maybe if you take out Joe Jorgensen and Jacob Hornberger's pre-2000 state convention circuits when, when I was still in high school. You give, give me that. Yeah, but in the last th in the last three years, certainly in the last two years, I've done more than, than anybody else. And it, even if you don't like me, even if you think I'm only half as good uh, as a candidate as, as your first choice for the nominee, I promise you, I will work more than twice as hard. And I will work for the next four years and do everything I possibly can to use the title of being the nominee of the Libertarian Party to build the party, to build the movement and get our message out as far as possible.